What's going on today, creators? Uh, the creators back with another video. Uh, this is gonna be like a quick little tutorial video, or not really a how-to. Just kind of walk you, help you walk through the steps on if you want to four valve swap a SN95. Um, <clears throat> the SN95, I mean by 94 to 04 Mustangs. Now this can probably work with a Fox body model, so 73 and a 93. Not 100% sure about those platforms because I always been working on the SN95 style. So <clears throat> there's a, I got a little tips and tricks for the Fox buys, but the majority of it is only for the 94 through the 04 Mustangs, V6, 50, and GT. So first, I'm gonna walk you through the tools that you need, the uh, everything that you have to worry about with the engine. Um, the wiring harness, transmission, rear end, and just tips and tricks to help you help you successfully swap the your Mustang. First things first, you need tools. A lot of it. You can use basic tools, it will work. You don't have to have impacts or drills or you know power tools or anything like that, but it does help if you use it. Next thing, you need room. As you can see, my last swap, I have a lot of stuff in the garage. There's the old motor and transmission right there, collecting junk, all that different stuff. So you're gonna need room. <clears throat> Next thing is, you need to have an engine hoist, or you can go old school and use a tree and a chain and a rope and all that stuff, but it's not recommended. <laughs> I don't want an engine to fall on you guys, so please use a cherry picker. You also would need, it would help to use wheel dollies. Let me get this stuff out the way. But yes, wheel dollies, put underneath your wheels, your transmission, rear end, stuff like that. You need bigger jacks because you're lifting a car up you need four jack stands you can't just use two and then use the jack for the other things you need four jack stands because you're going to be sitting it up high you're going to be underneath the car you got to make sure you stay safe because something happened to y'all guys i'm gonna be so mad and be so upset we just we just don't need that okay so make sure you use jack stands Safety's first. Safety first. Um, <clears throat> another thing that you can use that you don't necessarily have to have is an air compressor for power tools and whatnot. I didn't use it. I just recently got this from a friend of mine, so I didn't use it during the swap. But if I had it during the swap, it would have been so much easier. Just another tip. Another thing that you need and is very important, you need the patience. Because, I'm not going to lie to you, I have a lot of patience, a lot of patience, but this car drove me up the wall. I was so frustrated, I was mad, I was getting, I was throwing tools, I was going off on people, I was on edge, everything. So you just got to know, when you start doing this, it's going to take time. Now. If you have a little mechanical experience, I didn't. So if you do, it'll be a lot easier for you to tame with it, to cope with it. But I didn't have that. So I was frustrated. I was getting mad at my girlfriend, getting mad at my mom, my brother, everybody. So you gotta remember to stay patient because you don't want people to get mad at you because you trying to do something that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to hurt anybody trying to do what you're trying to do. That's really it for all the tools that you need. Um, like I said, you don't need much. The majority of it is just for safety wise. You, you, you need it for safety so you don't hurt yourself. Cause again, if you hurt yourself, I'm gonna be real mad. I'm gonna be upset. 
probably gonna go try and hunt you if you hurt yourself or something like that beat you at the hospital i don't know something you, you will hear from me if i find out that y'all got hurt from working on your car trying to do something trying to create something that you know anyways let's go ahead and get to what you need now <clears throat> whenever you're doing a four valve swap really if you do any type of engine swap it's always nice to have a donor car i know this is not another mustang i'm just using this as an example but i mean it is a ford even though it says mazda it does have four parts on it and whatnot so yeah whatever anyways you need a donor car you need either a wrecked car or a car that i don't know you that you just don't like or i don't know whatever maybe you just don't like the color of it you want to swap it to another one it's not a good not a good excuse to swap a car but whatever forget about that <laughs> anyways you need a second car to figure out how you're gonna put it in this car why because you need to see where everything is bolt up on the donor car see if you can match it up with this car before you even start trying to do it just make sure that you have the room make sure that you can do it and make sure that you've done your research and just you just got to double check especially if you have not done anything like this before you gotta make sure you double check make sure you go with the right route and the safest and the easiest route okay far as engines with a 50 gt and a v6 so if you starting from a gt it's actually a whole lot easier than starting from a v6 and a 50 why because the v6 got a whole bunch of different parts for weaker stuff the 50 is basically the same platform as the v6 the gt is the same platform as a four valve so you don't have to really worry about much with that and it look like we got some mail so let me go check that real quick now if you're going from between a 94 and a 04 mustang usually everything underneath the car bolts up right for instance the v6 has a different coolant reservoir that sits right here that's why this little notch is right here is for it the gts and the mach ones and the cobras they all have different types of coolant reservoirs this is the v8s the, the gts the four valves all that the bolts wasn't on here when i had the v6 it just so happened to ha already have the hose for it so that's very convenient just uh that's another reason why you need the donor cars to make sure that you have the right bolts that's supposed to be in there and like little stuff like that like the the actual clips that's supposed to go in there to hold this uh screw yeah i didn't have that with the v6 so it's nice to have it with the donor car also it saves you a lot of money on nuts and bolts and stuff like that you don't have to worry about hardware as much next thing you need to worry about if you're doing a v6 or a 50 you need to worry about the brake booster brake booster is a big round thing back here and quite frankly you see how tight the area is you cannot fit anything against that so you need to swap it out with either a gt or a four valve um and when i say gt i mean two valve so yeah just letting you know but you need to have this type of brake booster because it will first of all it's a lot smaller you can actually fit you can barely fit but i mean you can still fit whatever you need in there <clears throat> so 50s and v6 they have a different brake booster you need to use a 4.6 four valve or two valve brake booster now the power steering reservoir power steering reservoir is different for the 50s and the v6 i'll show you the guy the one on the v6 as you can see the v6 is this yellow reservoir that's on the side of the motor right underneath the alternator and that is like that on a 50 also with the two valve and the four valve power steering reservoir is right here all you have to really do is unbolt that you're good same thing with the ac the ac is bolted differently on the 50 and the v6 
but the two valve and the four valves same thing so all you have to do is unbolt it you don't have to worry about disconnecting any lines or anything like that so you all good right there next thing you need to worry about is the K member again V650 different K member can't use the same K member well you could but it's a lot harder because you have to do adapters welding cutting all that stuff and nobody wants to do that especially when you don't have a welder here you know fabrication work this is supposed to be like the easiest quickest swap that you can do so 50 v6 will not work 4.6 two valve four valve so a gt cobra terminator mach 1 it will work for the four valve now we're going to get to the wiring harness of course if you go a four valve you have to use the four valve wiring harness there's no way around that unless you just like this this uh electrician if you are an electrician and you can take the headache go right ahead but i'm not so i didn't even try it i was already getting a headache i was already getting frustrated so i just used the same thing <clears throat> no matter no matter if you had a v8 v6 50 you need to use the wiring harness for the engine for the engine that you you, you are borrowing so four valve engine basically all right this proportion of the video i'm at to sit the inside of the vehicle because uh first of all it's windy and this is where the main computer is the ecu or pcm whichever one you want to call it anyway you got to use the four valve one can't use the gt can't use uh v6 50 you got to use the four valve because you don't want to mess anything up you want to make sure everything is right island right driving right working right everything because if you got that in the wrong spot nothing will work right and basically you're gonna need the ecu harness the ecu is down here on the passenger side of the vehicle it's down here you pull this part off pull the sides uh, the thing down here i forgot what it's called this thing yeah well basically the wiring harness goes all the way up underneath the underneath the dash through the fender and connects to the engine harness and also the other harnesses that are up there that's in your passenger fender again it will help if you have a donor car if you don't have a donor car you will have to get everything that's inside the fender that you don't know about i think it's a evap system over there that you have to change out so a lot so just have a donor car It'll, it'll make your life so much easier another thing that you have to worry about is what type of transmission you're going to use if you are going automatic you need an automatic harness if you're going five speed you need a five speed harness if you're going six speed you need a six speed harness now i went automatic but this was a manual motor so I had to get a transmission controller all right so keep that in mind if you're trying to swap everything over you got you got to worry about that make sure you have the transmission to work on now if you're using a gt transmission it can work it's not going to be the best but it can work for what you have as long as the bell housing is matching up to it the bell housing is the front part of the transmission basically the big circular part this part right here the big circular part you can unbolt it from well you know what on an automatic you can't so only on five speeds and six speeds you can bolt it up right there again just do your research because you don't want to mess anything up and yeah just make sure you do your research now inside the car i basically took the inside of the Mach 1 wiring dash and all that stuff and put it in here so the gauge cluster is from the Mach 1 but the dash itself is from the V6 so everything that's wired up back here the climate control these traction button fog light buttons all this stuff right here for the wiring K 
came from the Mach 1. All the wiring for the pedals and the uh, seats, the power seats and everything came from the Mach 1. The only thing that didn't come from the Mach 1 is <clears throat> the power in the doors. So it still works, still plug up. The only thing is whenever you open up the door, the dome light doesn't come on. It does come on whenever you just turn it on, but as far as when you open the door, it doesn't come on. Not a big deal. Okay, now coming to the back. When I say that you need to use the tail light, the, the wiring harness from the tail light to the headlight to tail light, you need to use all of it. Or else it would not work. You have to do a whole bunch of cutting and splicing. <clears throat> so just reuse it so you don't have to worry about doing any wiring or anything like that so you don't mess up get a headache all that good stuff now the rear end the v6 and the 50 rear end will not work for a four valve why because okay the v6 is a 7.7 .7 rear end the four valve is a 8.8 .8 rear end and let's see if i can get that it's probably a little dirty underneath here, but yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dirty, but yeah. <clears throat> the four valve rear ends are actually an inch longer than the normal rear ends, I believe. So, that always works out better. Gets you more traction. <clears throat> uh, the V6 and the 50 is only one wheel spin, so open posi so it will not exactly work for the power that you're trying to put down for the v8 of the four valve <clears throat> gas tank i did have to switch out you don't have to but i did switch out just because it was already there i didn't have to worry about wiring or anything so it bolted right up i believe it works for the fox bodies too so the fox body people perfectly fine you'll be able to do it now the tailpipes, I did get the tailpipes from the four valve. I could have used the tailpipes from the V6. Really any tailpipes can work or basically exhaust. Any exhaust will work. The only thing that you really have to worry about is the, the headers, the exhaust manifold. So if you want to go with long tube headers, make sure you get the four valve long tube headers. You can't use the V6. You can't use the five O's it would not work but that's pretty much common sense well there you guys have it that's a quick little overview of what you should do whenever you four valve swap your car now you can add a little bit touches here and there like I add the hood you don't have to have the hood you can actually use the stock hood for anything uh, the reason why I use the cow hood so I can use the shaker but I didn't have to use the shake or I didn't have to use the shaker I didn't have to use the cow hood the stock hood right over there will actually work for it so <clears throat> that's good um, that's pretty much it it's really a straightforward swap if you had the donut car right next to you so just take your time be patient be safe and don't stress out over it because it's a project that we are just doing because we want to do it we want to have fun so create things be great that's all we're doing here but if you have any questions y'all know how to message me on instagram facebook whatever you want to message me on and i will get back to you guys on that um but that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it please like comment subscribe any questions ask them but um yeah that's it and one more thing you've been working with the electric the electrical the wiring the gas all that good stuff you don't want all your uh, hard work going down the drain so uh one important thing you need for safety is a fire extinguisher you don't want all your hard work going down the drain so try to prevent that safety first like i said get stay safe i'll be mad if something happened to you guys all right catch you on the next one